Art's going to tell us about one of the rarest Mustangs in history. You're, you told me your car belonged to Ed, so. And I said, yeah. And he says, no, it was Henry's car. I said, what? That's on the cluster, on the back side of the cluster. Right hand, now. Right now, handwritten. So Ford was still inventing the Mustang when this car was being built. Yes. 1963, four and a half months before the Mustang was actually introduced, these parts were being made for this car. But just by coincidence, I don't know what's in there. He said it's a 1950. I'm not sure what it is, but we're going to see what else Art has. So. Oh, man. This is a 50 Merc. 50 Merc. And your grandfather bought it My grandfather it bought it new in 1950. The car had been in storage for about 40 years. Man. This car is 100% original, with the exception of the tires, the battery, and the rebuilt and it doesn't carburetor. And it doesn't even have dual exhaust. Every 50 Merc's got dual Well, yeah, because those guys retrofitted them, right? Yeah. So a vinyl roof. Yep, this was called a Monterey, and they only built, I wanna say 490 of these things. I've never seen that logo on the side. And that is the Mercury head there, the flying bird on the front, uh, were actually gold plated. So if you look at the size of the back seat, you could tell why these were popular with uh, <laughs> teenagers back in the day. Man, that's yeah. the back seat. Yeah. Or even the front seat. Even oh. the front seat, yeah, yeah. So this is unrestored. Unrestored. This has 14,000 miles on it. I bought it. When I got it, it had 13. I put about 1,000 on it. Can I sit in here as a leader? Oh, no, no, please, yeah. We'll put the we'll roll the window down so you can get the full feel of sitting in a in a car that's... So there's a three on the tree. Three on the tree with overdrive. overdrive. With overdrive. Overdrive. Maybe set the brake to the left. Pull yeah. it. It's got that hand pull emergency. Put it in neutral. So turn the key on, pump it three times, and then push the start button to the left. Maybe pump it a couple more times. Keep pumping it. Yeah, I was going to offer you 500, but it's going down. There we go. Oh, man. Art, you're a, you're a lucky guy. Hey, I got two cars with stories, you know? And it's kind of, it's nice having a, having a, a classic that has a story behind it. Very cool. A car this special, see what something like this is worth. And I don't think we're even gonna be able to come close to true value because this is unrestored, original paint, rare option, leather top, not a vinyl top, 15,000 miles. A number four car, which should be fair condition, a running car, but needing restoration, probably. $18,500. In good condition, number three, 34,300. Number two condition, which is excellent, $47,900, and in concourse condition, which is best in the world, $59,500. But this is near concourse original, $59,500. I think this car exceeds that by a large amount. There's probably less than five in the world that might have this condition and this low mileage. I met this guy at a Cars and Coffee last Saturday, and so I'm going around talking to people about, you know, any old cars around, I'm looking for leads. He gives me his phone number and he says, my name is Dannon Holly. Dannon liked the yogurt and Holly liked the carburetor. How can I forget it? You invited me here to your friend's house to see a bunch of cars that he has around. So tell me about why he owns these cars. So he's a car enthusiast. Got the bug. You know, cars that remind him of his, his childhood and growing up. You look at them today, they need a little work, and his, his plan is to, to restore all these cars. So, so, so tell me about it. Does he drive these cars? Most of these cars don't drive. <laughs> so okay. he's, uh, he's looking to do some work uh, to them to, to get them, you know, road ready. Yep, um, yep. So here we have a, a Lincoln that he's had for a couple years now that he's looking to, you know, put some money into and put some work into. Look at that interior. Green velvet, green top, green horizontal surfaces. He's not true to any one brand. I mean, we've got Ford Ford, we got GM GM. So like, he just likes cars. He likes cars. But it seems to me, he likes big cars. He likes big cars. This, this is, is a Kentucky car. <laughs> this is gonna be a tough one. Oh yeah. That's, yeah. That requires welding. Right. Ooh. Does he have a favorite? Whichever car he's working on is whichever his favorite. Whichever one starts that yep. morning, probably. Whichever, whichever car he's working on tends to be his favorite. So this is a 12-cylinder XJS. Is, That's a, a massive motor, and it's a wonderful car. You know, I wouldn't want to do a valve job on there. I wouldn't even want to change the spark plugs on there. It's massive and very complicated. But boy, when they run, it's like silk. 
So I, I'm looking at this uh, Chrysler Imperial over here. That's a rare car, man. Now that car runs. You know, it's got an Imperial engine, whatever that means. Whoop. Oh, and of course, there's the Rolls Royce. This must be a low mileage car because if you look at the condition of like the master cylinder and that heating and air conditioning, ducting and stuff, that's all like pretty nice shape. Man. Yeah, I believe this car has about 45,000 original mm -hmm. miles. This was one of the rare cars that, you know, at one time you couldn't put glass or plastic covers in front of headlights. That's why, if you remember the, the original 240Zs had notchy, notchy uh, headlights, they originally wanted to put glass covers or plastic covers over them, make it more aerodynamic, but the U.S. government wouldn't allow it. That's why when Jaguar E-types came out, the early Jaguar E-types, the, the Series 1s, the Series 1 and a half had glass headlight covers. They had to, for the Series 2, take them off. The government wouldn't allow it. Same thing with this. They allowed glass covers, and then the government said, nope, can't do that. So but, what you know, can you tell me about this? We talk about luxury and large. This is it, man. That's it. And it's not American. It's not American. Well, there's an there's a E-type. Look, 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 look into the interior of that car. Well, it's right-hand drive, wooden dashboard. Wow, look at that dash. Look at, look at this up here. Now, we were earlier at a guy's shop who was wood graining metal. This is wood. They don't have to wood grain it because it is wood. What you're looking at there is one of the most iconic grills in the history of the automobile. They, used, they were made of silver back in the old days. Uh, they're probably made of stainless now or some polished aluminum. But it's just just a beautiful grill. That is another foreign car because I know it's not a Mercedes SSK. Is that a Volkswagen powered or is that a Vega powered or? Nope, there's an engine. So I that I think that's a Vega engine. Probably a low mileage car. You could buy these. This might be a Gazelle. And you could have bought these uh, as a kit or as a completed car. It's only got 6,400 miles. If you wanted to buy the real Mercedes SSK, you're going to have to come up with probably uh, $15 million. But for a percentage of that, a very small percentage, you could own one that on a dark light, a, a dark night in the rain, you could kid fill some people that, that they would think this is a real one. Cool. And that other garage, is that? Oh, it's open too. Yep. So this is a Lincoln Continental convertible. Main feature about this car is that this door opened conventionally and this door opened suicide, which means this one hinges in the front and open this way, and this one hinges in the back and opens this way. You know, I, at some point I would have said, this is probably not worth restoring. Now they are worth restoring because they're, this in such demand. Yeah, these cars are going up. This Nova, you said he had one like this? Or this is the one he, he had? He had one like this growing up. So this uh -huh. is the, the car that he wanted. Well, the car that his parents bought for ah, him when he was in high school. No kidding. Didn't appreciate it then. It's like, oh man. That's a, a candidate for a new paint job? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Six cylinder automatic. You know, that engine will run forever. I mean, these cars just never break down. Does he have, he has more cars or is this it? He has more cars. Yes, Does his <laughs> wife know how many cars? Uh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Listen, man, it was a pleasure meeting you. Tell your friend I really appreciate it. Will do. And I hope to get to meet him one day, too. Thank you. Oh, wait. Thanks, Tom. And happy hunting to you.